as storytelling progressed into the 20th century and into our own time, really uh, the bulk of the heroes of stories, because it's kind of more interesting, are this alienated, tormented, cursed, uh, did you have to read Catcher in the Rye in high school, Holden Caulfield, disenfranchised, doesn't, nothing works out for him. How about every movie that Tom Hanks has made, almost? You know, a cast away, literally, on, a, on an island by himself, and when he comes back, eh, he feels out of place, a fish out of water. Uh, when he was in Big, his first big hit, he's a little boy who wishes he could be grown up. He wakes up and he's an adult, but uh, he's not really an adult, so he doesn't interact well with the other people in downtown New York, and so forth. Now, so, the irony is that while we speak of Wagner as being such a revolutionary composer who kind of took the art form of opera and drop-kicked it into the next century and created modern music, music of the future, the fact is that the Dutchman was very much a reflection of the times. It was the type of story that most people were telling back then. And this image of the Matrix, of the people who are complacently under the illusion that life has meaning, and the two people who realize that it doesn't. This helps explain a lot about the music, and here I want to start getting into why the music in this opera sounds the way it does. Because there's a strange thing, you know, when you think about Wagner, you think about those gigantic voices against those huge orchestras, and you know, the, uh, the, the stereotype of the 500 pound soprano who can shatter glass with her voice, and the huge orchestra, and yelling and screaming. There is that element to mature Wagner, and there are moments in this opera when indeed the orchestra is a mighty instrument, and uh, it's difficult for the voices to be heard over it because uh, it's simulating storms at sea and so forth. But as I mentioned, for the rest of the cast, you have old-fashioned opera with a type of orchestration that's very much in the background that Mozart might have recognized, that's kind of in that style, uh, where the orchestration is light, where the melodies are kind of in a popular style, and it's like night and day. And how could, you know, I've read a lot of commentary about this opera in which musicologists will say, well, this is because Wagner was young, he was immature, he was still working out his theories about music drama, but he wasn't quite there. I don't think that's it. I think that Wagner was thinking about these two classes of people, the complacent, delusional people and the tragic realists, and they have this contrasting styles of music to set them apart from one another, to create two realities, just as in that movie. Now, for instance, the first solo that you get is from the steersman, the helmsman of Captain Dallant's ship. And they pulled into port, and they're going to wait out a storm and hope for better weather in the morning. And to occupy his time, the steersman sings a lovely song. It's just a song of the sea, a sailor missing his sweetheart. And it's, where's the big Wagnerian orchestra? A lot of it is unaccompanied. And when the orchestra comes in, it's very chaste, and as I said, kind of Mozartian. And it's a nice tune. except the ring, and you didn't know that music, would you guess that that was Wagner? You know? Now, the steersman, you see, he belongs to that world that's plugged into the matrix, not realizing how dull, repetitive, and pointless his existence is. 
Immediately after, he kind of sings himself to sleep, falls asleep in the middle of his song. You won't, but he does, just to, just to be clear about that. Um, then the Dutchman's ship sails in. He gets to come ashore uh, every seven years, according to this loophole in apparently the legal document of his curse, and, uh, and search for a woman who will you know, sacrifice herself to release him from his, from his curse. And now we get the full Wagnerian orchestra. I can only suggest it on a piano with my 10 arthritic fingers, but the percussion, the kettle drums are roaring and the brass is blaring and the strings are swirling. And uh, I hope that the uh, baritone has a big honking voice, otherwise he'll look like Marceau Marceau. <laughs> different realities. Now, uh, this happens to be the Dutchman's great solo of Act One. And you know, when the steersman sang, it was a song. It had verse, refrain, verse, refrain. And as I say, it fell asleep in the middle of the next refrain, but it had a normal kind of structure. The Dutchman's solo is not an aria, it's not a song. It is like a, it's almost like a sonata. It's almost orchestral. The orchestra carries the burden of the expression and it has movements it, and it takes him through a roller coaster of emotions and it has no particular form it just has sections uh, the first section I was playing from there this is where he kind of vents his rage at the unfairness that he cannot find the peace of the grave that he's longing for <laughs> <laughs> 